How's it going? And welcome to The Guitar Effect. My name is Rob. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at my recently acquired Tech 21 RK5 fly rig, which is Richie Cotson's um, signature fly rig. Um, but before I do get into it, please like and subscribe so you can be kept up to date with everything we're doing here at The Guitar Effect. And while you're at it, hit the notifications bell so you'll actually get notified when we post a new video. So, the fly rig. I recently acquired this as part of a trade um, on a free ads website here in Ireland. Um, and I hadn't really been looking out for one, um, but I thought it could be an interesting thing to, to have a look at and maybe even do a review of for the channel. Um, and I must admit, I've been absolutely blown away by it. Um, so henceforth, I shall have this in my guitar case whenever I go to play any sort of a gig. Should I A, be lucky enough to ever play a gig again, and B, be simultaneously unlucky enough for something to go wrong at one of those gigs that will require me to have a backup rig, because that's how I intend on using the fly rig, is as a always available either replacement for my amplifier or replacement for my pedal board. And in that respect, I think it just does the job really, really, really well. So I've used it in a track um, to kind of show how you might, the different kind of sounds that are available from it, and um, so have a listen to that. So here is the fly rig. As you can see, it's really, really small, really dinky. Um, small enough to really go almost unnoticed in a guitar case. It comes with its own uh, power supply. I can't remember actually what the power requirements are of this now, but I know it's nine. Oh, it's 12 volt DC, 150 milliamps. 150 milliamps, unbelievable. Um, so what this is, is basically a entire pedal board and amp simulator in one tiny unit and um, you have your amp simulator here which is the sans amp and um, amp simulator it doesn't specify what amp it's modeling but it kind of sounds fendery to me talk about sans amp for a moment so long before there was a, a pod or any sort of digital amp modeling sans amp had been making various different uh, amplifier replacement products basically um, and they had this, I can't remember what it's called now, I think it was literally called just the Sans Amp. And it was a pedal that was about maybe twice the size of an MXOR pedal, a little bit smaller than that, that had a, if I remember correctly, a Marshall emulation, a Fender emulation and a Vox emulation in one pedal. It had switches and then you could switch the microphone position, you could switch the gain structure and had three band EQ and some gain stuff and volume and stuff like that. And it was really, really successful, and people use it um, in direct solutions for ages. And it was actually that pedal, I think, really that spawned the character series, which was like the Liverpool and the 
oh, what were the other ones called? The Liverpool was the Fox one. I think it was the British was the Marshall one. Um, I can't remember what the blonde was, the uh, Fender one. And they became really, really popular and to the, to the extent that those Tech 21 pedals were cloned with the Joyo American sound series. So the American sound and British sound and uh, the, basically they cloned all those pedals. Um, and that is the basis of the preamp that's in this. And basically the speaker simulation, from what I can tell, there is a speaker simulation on board here, but from what I can tell, the speaker simulation is always on and it sounds good both into the front end of an amplifier or going into a direct solution like a PA or recording interface. Um, I don't know that I'd necessarily go to this as a recording solution. Not because it doesn't sound good, but, but because for me, it doesn't have the effects or the tones that I'd need for recording. Having said that, you could just use the sans on part of it as an amplifier, absolutely, and put your pedal board in front of it. I think it would work really, really well. So just to go through the different things that are available on it, there is the amp part, which is just the sans amp. So the sans amp has level, there's a reverb on board, and there is high, mid, and low controls, and a drive control. And if you were using this direct, you would have to have this on all the time. But if you weren't, you could actually use it as a low gain overdrive, for example, and have the sound off your amplifier. The low gain overdrive coming from here, the high gain overdrive coming from the OMG section, which I'll go into in a second. And then you'd have a separate boost. So you'd have four different, more, four, five, six even different possible overdrive combinations out of this little unit, which is amazing. Then um, over here we have the OMG section, which is Richie Cotson's signature overdrive pedal, which is actually available from Tech 21 as a standalone overdrive pedal. When it says overdrive, but it's really very much a distortion pedal. So, I mean, I never had the gain past a quarter here because I like to be able to have my overdrive manageable and boost it with um, the boost should I want to. It's like a, like a Marshall in a box style pedal, but a, a, a quite a gainy one. I reckon if you put the, the, the drive knob on this up high, it could be very, very high gain. Um, and then there is a separate boost on the end. The, uh, the other thing I'll mention, by the way, is these switches are those ones that don't click. And it really feels like they're mega well built and this could this could last a, a very, very long time. Um, then you'll, at the end here, you have the delay section. So the delay section has a, I'd say it's kind of like a relatively clear analog delay, maybe kind of, it's not analog, it's digital, I'd say. Might be analog, actually, I don't know. I'm assuming it's digital, but um, it's kind of like a carbon copy, that kind of sound, I think. And maybe a little bit more synthetic sounding than a carbon copy, but it's that kind of uh, clarity of repeat. Then you have, on the delay, you have level, repeats, drift, which I'll get into in a second, and time. So time obviously sets the amount, the time of the delay. The repeat sets the amount of uh, repeats. The level sets the level of the repeat, and then the drift control brings in modulation, which is unbelievably useful. So you can turn the modulation off if you want to have a clean delay, and you can bring the modulation in if you want to have a kind of chorusy modulated delay, which works really, really well. Um, again, it's not on the same level as the emulations that are in my TC Electronic pedals or the the HX effects. It's simply not as detailed and as inspirational a delay, but you can completely gig it, no problem. Um, and it's, it's you know, it'll sound great. And then you have a tap tempo at the end for the delay, which works really, really well too. So tap tempos as well can be touch and go as to how accurately they can allow you to tap in the tempo, but that works really, really well. So effectively, how I would use this is in two ways. A, I get to the gig and my pedal board goes down and I'm in the middle of the gig, and I don't have time to troubleshoot what's going, down, going on with my pedal board, I would just move my pedal board aside and plug this into the front end of my amp. Or B, actually there's three possible ways. B, my amp goes down, and I know my pedal board's working fine, so I just plug my pedal board into the input of this, just turn the sans amp on and send that to the PA. Or C, both die, or I don't want to travel with them, like I'm going to play a fly gig somewhere, thus the name fly rig, and I just bring this and I can do any sort of covers or function gig with this, no problem. And actually, this is the thing about this that I really want to stress. 
it wouldn't be a chore or a uncomfortable experience or a stressful or panicky experience to play a function gig with this unit. And I think that's its strongest suit. Yes, it would be different to using the presets I would normally use for those, those sort of gigs, but I could completely comfortably play a night, get all the sounds I need. And I go through that in the sound demo of this, all the different sounds that I would use it for, covers them off, no problem going direct or going into the front end of an amp. And um, it works really, really well. It has all the sounds that I'd need to be able to play a function gig all day. So I think um, I've covered everything off on it. So let's have a listen. Okay, so while this is a really brilliant piece of kit as a backup rig, part of the reason, as I would have outlined in the intro, that it's so great is that it's so simple. And so it's really not that much for me to uh, demonstrate here because it's not, it's not a multifaceted thing. Like it's got everything you need to get through, I think, a, a covers gig situation. Or if you're like Richie Cotton and effectively you're, you know, fundamentally like a blues player or something like that, um, or a blues rocky player that doesn't have a lot of like signature effects going on and stuff like that, I think it will get you through that as well. Um, the way I'm going to demo it now is I'm going straight into my interface because I'm demoing it in the capacity as a backup rig because that's where I think it it really is something that should be in every game, every working musician's gig bag. Just from the point of, from that point of view, it's really brilliant. Um, I'm going to go through the the different sounds that are available on it and how I would use them, and also little things like how it reacts to the guitar's volume control and stuff like that as well, and different pickups. So, as I mentioned, I'm going straight from my Strat here, which is my main covers kind of wedding band gigging guitar that when, if we ever get back gigging, this is the one I use predominantly for that. It is a 2014 60th anniversary Stratocaster that started off life with a tortoise shell pickguard. Um, the only modifications I made to it are I put new pickup covers on it, um, obviously a new parchment pickguard, new age knobs, and then as you can see, I have a little 59 in the bridge because I use this um, guitar for nearly everything in that band, like it can cover all ground, right? So with the volume knob up full on the guitar, and I've turned, as you can see here, the lights are on and the sounds are on part, which is effectively the amp simulation, right? Here is me hitting the strings lightly on the humbucker. And here is me hitting the strings lightly on the single coil. Okay, and then if I dig in, For direct and completely analog box, that just sounds brilliant. Right, I can then roll off ever so slightly down to like maybe eight, and it's completely clean, right? So roll up full. Back to down. Go into the out of phase setting, roll down again. I have my tone knob backed off a little bit. So. And just in case it's hard to see the knobs, um, the reverb is at like, um, Two o'clock, the high trebles at two o'clock, the mid is slightly backed off, so it's at like 11.30. The low is just about at 12, and the drive um, is at two o'clock. Now, and the volume in this case is at about two o'clock as well. So I have it set up effectively, right? So that if I dig in, there's a bit of drive, and if I play light, it's clean. It's But it's clean with a bit of kind of body. Okay, so then what I can do, and say I'm playing a Is that's a bit too dirty, I'll roll back a little bit. Lead 
lead section. You go, yeah, that's working. Or you could kick on the boost and get a little bit more of a dirty lead. works great for that it's like a it's like a uncolored overdrive which is effectively a boost right it works really well and um, so then i can roll the that's the volume full i can roll the volume back again and i can either choose to just put on the the echo here right which i have the drift control which is effectively adding modulation i have the drift control set to just pass halfway i have the the level below half right and it sounds like this you can hear a little bit of ambience. And what I find that great for is if I need to play like some kind of sweet picking part. So. Having the gain push that little bit means I can touch really lightly and get a big full bloss blossomy sound. Kind of cheesy. But if I dig in, there's a little bit of gain there. It's just a brilliant unit in that respect, and I would, I would, not voluntarily because I like playing with an amp. But if my amp went down, or even my pedal board went down, and I'll speak about how you can use it into your amp as well. If my pedal board went down, um, and I had playing to my amp, I'd be like, yeah, I can, I can enjoy which I think is a key thing. I can enjoy the experience of playing the gig with this with this unit. And if my amp went down, or maybe I'm doing a fly gig and I don't like the sound of the house amp that I get on a cover thing or something, I could always plug it direct into the desk, which it's doing an admirable job of, in my opinion. So then the other thing is, the wedding man I play with does a lot of kind of almost busky, chordy, versions of songs uh, punk rock kind of songs so one is should i stay or should i go by the clash and then, so if i were to wind the volume back to my clean sound it's it's grand if i rewind it up full that does that would work for me all night long with that Great sound. Okay, so they're the kind of clean and um, clean and sort of break up -y sounds. So then if I then turn the, the overdrive on with that, or the distortion really is what it is. It says it's a drive, but it's very much a distortion. Well, again, wind my volume down a little bit. Maybe get a little bit more gain. rock sound on the neck pickup. This works really well. Then the back pickup. Okay. Um, I can, for like, you know, classic rock stuff, you can wind the gain off a little bit. Works great. I can wind up gain up full and contemporary rock stuff. So it works great for those tight power chords. Or wind the gain back a little bit and it does maybe a little bit more. And of 
course then the last thing you're going to need to do is play we can put on the delay with this So you have your, you know, you have your lead sound. You have your clean sound by rolling the volume back a little bit on the sans amp. Then you roll your volume up full, you've got your punk rock kind of dirty sound. Then you um, roll the, or sorry, then you turn on the drive, roll the volume back, you've got your classic rock sound. Then you um, roll your volume up full, you've got your contemporary rock sound. And then you turn on the boosts on either the clean, the, well, the sans amp channel or the OMG drive channel. And you can have either like a, a cleanish solo or a really screaming lead tone. So the last thing I'll do is just demonstrate the, the power of the delay, right? So if I bring in and bring the level up past noon, go. Obviously, you'd have to bend down and tweak this because you couldn't have it like this all night, but you can also do a. Make sure my volumes and tones are up full. Bit more delayed than that. That's available to you, no problem as well. So they are all the different sounds of this um, really second hand that would seem ridiculously affordable unit can, can do. It being sans amp, um, having that heritage that I spoke about before, you can just completely rely on this thing. Um, that it's, There's no digital trickery, there's no menus. It will get you through a gig and it will make that experience enjoyable for you, which I think is what a unit like this really needs to do. So there you have it, the Tech 21 or K5 Richie Cotson fly rig. Um, never mentioned in the intro that, uh, I, as I mentioned, I got this as part of the trade. There's one of these on the free ads website at the moment for 120 euro, which I suppose is about $130 or about 90 pounds, which to me, Stop what you're doing, go find one of these used, buy it, put it in your guitar case, and you'll never be in a situation where you're in trouble when your rig goes down at a gig, should we ever get to gig ever again. Like it's it's so affordable to get, this is the, the old version, there's a new one of these out now that has even more functionality to it, which to a certain extent maybe defeats the purpose if you can bend in and tweak things, I don't know, another day's discussion. Um, I just think it's unbelievable value, and Tech 21 make top notch stuff. I don't know how much this was new, but considering you can pick them up for 120 euro second hand, just, just go buy one because it's a brilliant piece of kit. So there you have it, the Orc 5 So thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot them in the comment section below. Um, please like and subscribe as always. And thanks for staying this long if you're watching this part of the video. And I'll see you soon in another video. Take it easy.